art between geopolitics, between trade relations, between the kickoff to earnings season, you would think that there would be a little bit more kind of maybe tempered optimism, yet the markets sit right near record highs. Is it justified? Well, I'll tell you this. I think there's three things that are happening that we're not talking enough about. So, you know, obviously the tone around trade is so much better this month than it was in September and August and, and certainly the month of May. <clears throat> so it feels like both sides need to get something accomplished here desperately. And, and both sides are willing to show some flexibility. We haven't seen that throughout this entire 18-month uh, process. And I think that's very important. So, you know, the, the flexibility means that we're probably not going to escalate from here. And if we're not going to escalate, the market can probably compartmentalize that and put that over here and say, okay, it doesn't get worse than this. Let's move forward. I think earnings in general have been, Netflix is a great example. Better than feared, right? You know, and we're concerned about Disney, Apple, uh, NBC, Peacock, and everyone else seems to have a streaming product that's coming out this year, and yet Netflix was okay. Not great. They missed the subgrowth, both domestically and internationally, but it's not the disaster that we saw last month. So I think earnings in general feel like that. The third thing that we're that I think we're missing is the inflection point in housing. We've had three months in a row of great housing numbers. Uh, the existing home sales, same home sales. Yesterday's the uh, National Association of Home Builders Index, three-month high. The inflection point was in December, and, and, and that chart looks really good. And that's a really important part of the economy that we don't focus on enough. So if that's going to inflect better, the tone around trade is going to be better, and earnings are better than feared, I think we're, we're okay. So, so I mean, there, there have been certain hot spots that many traders and even us at this network have been watching. We've been watching semiconductors, mm -hmm. which recently hit another record high, by yeah. the way. So you talk about China trade. You talk about the home builders and housing stocks, that sort of thing. The one place that hasn't really played a little bit more of a catch-up game is the small cap stocks. Yeah. And trade probably weighs into that discussion. It doesn't bother you that smaller cap companies in the stock market right now are not participating as fully in this kind of move back towards record highs. Yeah, uh, yes and no. We know, the, if you look at the Russell 2000 and the S&P 500, the gap has tightened a bit, but not enough. So you've, there are about 500 basis points separation in that sort of multiple year to date. Um, and that's usually not true. It's usually the other way around. So the longer term trend would be for the Russell 2 to actually do better. I think you need to see, um, Stabilization and economic growth. So, in a, and we've uh, we've got from three percent to two and a half to two percent growth, and I think that may be our mean growth rate. So, for the next, let's say for the next year or two, we're a, a two percent, two and a half percent grower. If that stabilizes, I think small caps catch a bid. When when you've got that deceleration that we saw from eighteen to nineteen, you have people say, okay, there's only two places to be. I, can, I need to be in momentum because they're agnostic to economic growth, and I need to be in defensive because yields are so low. And that that whole middle gets cut out. That's the whole Russell two thousand and the small and the mids. I think if we were to say, okay, we saw three quarters in a row of two to two to a quarter percent GDP growth, the Russell 2 gets that bid. And I think that, that, that's going to happen. It makes a lot of sense. The kickoff to earnings season almost always involves a heavy dose of financials. We haven't gotten all of them yet, but we've gotten a lot of them. Is there anything that you can glean from what we've seen so far that makes you feel like the rest of the earnings season or the rest of the market year will go towards the upside or is there a reason to be cautious now? The amazing thing about the financials so far, and this is to every, every Citibank, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, loan demand has been strong. And I think that's such a great sign, right? So obviously none of these banks are making money in their net interest margins. You know, they're just with a flat yield curve and, and low interest rates. That's a very difficult part of that business. But the part that we care about the most is not that the cost of capital is so low, but do people want it? And, that, and the loan demand numbers out of Bank of America yesterday were staggering. And that's both on the consumer side and on the industrial side. So the CNI loans, the, the circular credit, the, 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 you know, all of the types of demand that we hope would be robust at this, with the, you know, at the cost of capital right now is starting to happen. And it's probably the best quarter we've seen for loan demand in, in the entire cycle. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. We'd love to see better net interest margins. That's just not going to happen for a while. And we get Morgan Stanley later on today. Art Hogan, thank you very much.